hello everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> no, really, thank you so much for coming. <laughs> this is an unusual festival, but we are thrilled to be presenting it. My name is Cameron Bailey. I'm the artistic director and the co-head here at TIFF. And today uh, we get to watch the new film uh, called Falling, and it's the feature directorial debut of Vigo Mortensen, whom you all know, I think, as one of our finest actors. As you join us today, we encourage you to reflect on, on where we are. We always want to do this when we uh, gather together here at TIFF, um, so we want us uh, just to think about the land that we're on, uh, who the traditional keepers of this land are, uh, what the treaty relationship is, or if it's unceded territory. Here in Toronto and where we are today, we're located on the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit and the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, the Wendat, and the Haudenosaunee. And this territory is within the lands that are governed by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, and it's home to many First Nations and Métis and Inuit people. And we're grateful to be working on this land and to be, pre to be presenting, especially this year, a number of new works by Indigenous filmmakers. We are here because also the support of many people and organizations is crucial to us. We want to thank them, beginning with our lead sponsor, Bell, and our major sponsors, RBC, L'Oreal Paris, and Visa, and also the support we get from government, the Government of Ontario, Telefilm Canada, and the City of Toronto for their continued support. This film plays as a part of the special presentation section at the festival, which is proudly sponsored by Visa. And I also want to thank the members and donors uh, to TIFF who all help us create a more informed, engaged, and connected world. And uh, we're grateful for that support all year round. Uh, and if you're interested in uh, being a bigger part of TIFF, you can go to tiff.net slash join and all the info is there. We have a prize here. It's called the People's Choice Award. It's the award that our audience votes for. So we encourage you to vote for your favorite films. You can go to tiff.net slash vote and do that. Big thanks to the partners who brought us the film, Mongrel Media, its distributor in Canada, United Talent Agency, UTA, and Hanway Films for providing us with a film. Thanks also to the British Film Council and the Danish Film Institute for their generous support. And uh, if you are going to watch the film again online or you have friends or family who are doing that, we've got a pre-recorded Q&A for, for this film on our YouTube channel. But right now, we are... are I am thrilled because the director of this film has been really seriously engaged with getting it out to, to audiences in a way that very few filmmakers are or, or can be. Um, he's someone who is interested in every detail of how it's presented. It's a great passion project for him and um, it's a film that I saw at the Berlin Film Festival back when we had festivals where we could have full houses in February. Um, met with Vigo then, um, told him how much I love the film. It's a film that's very meaningful um, for me personally. It's a film about a, a father and a son and I had recently lost my father when I saw it uh, and um, I was very moved by the film and the way Vigo spoke about it as well. You could tell that this was a project that um, that had a lot of personal meaning for him as well. And he is going to call in and introduce the film to you today. So I'm very pleased that we have him on the line uh, from Europe where he is based. And uh, I want to just call up the Skype now and introduce Vigo Mortensen. Vigo, how you doing? <laughs> I'm good. Can you see me? I, we can see you. Yep. You're on the big screen here in TIFF Bell Lightbox Cinema One. Welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can't recognize what you're wearing on your shirt. What is that? <laughs> you look, you look fabulous. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And I put on my very cleanest, uh -huh. finest. Oh, 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 it hurts the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> finest uh, piece of clothing I could find. Well, thank um, you. I could do no like, Toronto Film Festival. I'm really, I'm, I honestly, I'm heartbroken that I cannot be there. To me, the premiere at the Toronto Film Festival was from, for me always the dream, always the goal. It is by far, um, there's no comparison, the most important premiere 
for, for me and for this movie, which was shot in and around Toronto with an all-Canadian crew, except for our Danish cinematographer, Marcel Siskin, and, and well, me as director, although I have a Canadian grandfather, um, and a mostly a Canadian um, team of actors. And, and so to, to, to be there with you is what I really wanted. But I, I, I'm here with you as best I can be. It's, I'm very excited that the movie's finally going to be shown on a big screen at the Toronto Film Festival. It's a, it's a great honor, and I thank you, Cameron, for inviting us to oh, the show. It's, it's our pleasure and, um, and our honor to present the film, Vigo. We know you're going to be back uh, afterwards for a Q&A after, uh, after the film, and we're going to have a little surprise then as well. So um, we're looking forward to that. Is there anything else you want to prepare the audience with before we watch? Um, I would say that, well, I mean, it's my first film as a director, and I'm, you know, I'm very happy to be showing it to you that we, it was a long journey and a difficult journey to get it made and, and that we're finally here is, is very exciting. And I was thinking today about it and, and in my opinion, all movies in one way or another are a form of personal confession, I think. And I guess all I can say is that I hope that in some way you will relate to and perhaps, hopefully, be moved by this confession. <laughs> mm. and, and please uh, enjoy the show. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Beautiful way to put it. We'll see you afterwards. Thank you, Vigo. Enjoy the film. Vigo, we, um, we have some special guests in the audience. You know about this, but uh, maybe some of the others here do not. So I want to also bring up some of your cast. We have Grady McKenzie, who played your character as a young man, John. Gabby Vales, who played Monica. Please come on out. Bracken Burns, playing Jill, and Piers Byfoot. Are they here? Come on out. Looking amazing. All right, you can, we can each take a, a spot where there's a white dot. There we go. <laughs> Congratulations on this film. Congratulations to all of you. <laughs> and your maestro. Good job. Yes, great job, all of you. Big, I want to begin by asking you about the story of the film and how you came to shoot it in Ontario and be able to cast people who live right in the in the neighborhood. Well, we had the, maybe the best casting director I know, or she's certainly one of the best in the world, uh, Deirdre Bowen, uh, lives in Toronto, and I met her originally. She ca she cast David Cronenberg's movies and many other movies, and um, she found. She found all four of these fine actors, and I met many others as well, and, but they were by far the, the best ones for the part, and they, they did such a great job in the movie. Uh, I'm, I'm so proud of you guys, and I'm, I wish I was standing on the stage with you. I'm, I'm there as best I can be. Unfortunately, the very difficult situation in the world right now. It made it impossible for me to go. I tried, but I couldn't do it uh, and come back to my obligations here because of the different quarantine rules and so forth. But I'm, I'm really proud of the fact that our movie that we made in Ontario province, in Toronto and, and outside of Toronto, uh, had, its, had its premiere at TIFF. You know, it's it's a great, great honor. And I'm so glad you guys were able to see it um, be at the premiere. You know, how did it feel watching it? How did it feel watching it? Great, amazing, good word. 
It's a little devastating as well, Vigo, this film, <laughs> which is a good thing. Um, I want to ask your actors here about what it was like working with Vigo. He's obviously an actor himself and he's directing you. Did he have any special advice for you uh, when he came to talk to you about how to perform in the film? Maybe I'll start with you. What did Vigo tell you about how to act? <laughs> Talking to the microphone, Grady, go ahead. Put it right up next to your mouth and say whatever you want. <laughs> go ahead, buddy, you can talk into that microphone. Oh. You can he tell me said that I act in the movie and I am an actor. <laughs> <laughs> and you certainly are. <laughs> Uh, do you remember, Grady, do you remember that you used to call me the boy who says go? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember why? No. <laughs> I'll tell you. You were, of course, you were a very young man at the time. You were only four at the time. You're, you're five now, right? No, six. You're six. six. Oh, my goodness. Well, you were very young then. It's probably hard to remember, but when you were four... Your first day on the set, and we were doing the scene where you run down to the kitchen. You remember that? Yeah. And, um, and yes, the cut and all that. Well, you had to run in and stop, and you saw your mom with the duck, right? She was plucking the duck. And I said, okay, Grady, this is the first take, and this is the first time we're going to do it. And when I, when I say action, then you, then you come in right and you said okay yeah. and so we rolled, we we rolled camera and I said action and you started jumping around like a superhero and I said what are you doing and you said I'm doing action <laughs> <laughs> and then so I said okay here's how we're gonna do it. I'm just gonna say go and then you come in and then I said go on the next take and you came and you did it perfect just like you did everything in the movie perfect and then I went to get a cup of coffee at one point during that morning that we were shooting and you asked around, you kept saying to the people that were working on the movie, where's the boy who says go? <laughs> and, uh, and so then they, they couldn't figure out what you we were talking about. And then your mom, who's really cool, and I believe she's here tonight, right? She said, I think they're talking about the, he's talking about the director. <laughs> and, then, and so then I came back from the coffee. And so that was my name that I was very proud of, the boy who says go, that that you thought I was a boy like you, which I am, and we're both <laughs> actors, right? Yeah. Con congratulations, buddy, on your premiere at the Toronto International Film Festival. Yes. <laughs> Katie, congratulations. Um, Gabby, what about you? Did Vigo have any advice for you? He just said, try your best and don't give up, and then, yeah. <laughs> and that worked? <laughs> Okay, good, good. <laughs> um, what about uh, Bracken and Piers? What, uh, what words of advice or direction do you remember from working with Vigo? Um, okay, well, I'll say two. One was, uh, was, I think, go for it, crunchy monster. Um, <laughs> when I was chewing the toast. Um, yep, crunchy monster was a good one. And also, actually, it was a great piece of... Um, direction that was for another actor but um the set was very open and we were allowed to go um on set even if we weren't filming filming and vigo said to one of the other actors he said the moment is just a shift in weight and i really really liked that and i've thought about it since and huh. crunchy monster i've also <laughs> thought about that since <laughs> I think the main piece of advice Vigo gave me was just to be an angsty teen and hate my grandfather. <laughs> so, it, yeah. You did a great job of it. Thank you. <laughs> um, Vigo, you, you said uh, when you were introducing the film that, that every film is, is a kind of a personal expression in a way. And I wonder, because the film does feel so intimate and so, so immersed in that family dynamic, especially between the father and son, can you talk a little bit about what drove you to tell this story? Um, well, I guess the reason I was, I wanted to explore my feelings for my parents, 
is, is I guess, the impetus to write the screenplay. Uh, my mother had recently passed away, and I was remembering lots of things about her and lots of things about my father, who was not doing that well at the time, and he passed away uh, a little less than two years after that. And, um, and he himself, just like she had been, was in the early stages of dementia. So, you know, I, wanted, I, I was looking at them and seeing how they'd forgotten so many things. So I didn't want to forget the things I had heard at my mother's memorial. I, I, I heard stories that I was familiar with, but I heard them, they were told slightly differently, which made me think about how subjective memory is, which is something that we see in this movie, you know, as well. You don't have to have dementia. I think everybody kind of automatically edits their memories in a way. It's almost like a self-defense psychological tool or something that we we just what's convenient we remember things the way we want to so memory is great to explore uh, but even though we're so sure that at least we can count on that even if the present is confusing what we remember from the past that goes along with those photographs that we keep and those notes we've made or diary entries that they're reliable and really they're not but it's still worth exploring them and so I, I wanted to remember these things as best I could I was writing them down and it became a story that then became the screenplay and uh, I wanted to explore what I felt for them but I also wanted to consider seriously what I had learned from them good things not so good things lessons you know um, about the, their lives and the way they had the choices they had made and the things that they passed on to me, you know, and it, 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 it's largely a fiction, but that that's the foundation of it. And, and the greatest thing was that a lot of many of the actors and many members of the crew shared stories. They just without being asked, they, they related to this story that we were telling together in a, in a really great collective way. And they were very emotional about it as in some cases, you know, people were very moved in some of the scenes. I could see that in, in the crew's faces, and it was great to have that support for all of us actors. You know, you could really feel that they were on our side. It was really, it was it was a blessing, really. And um, and I've had that with I don't know how this audience feels about it, but but other audiences that have seen the movie, when I've been able, been lucky enough to speak with them, they have related aspects of the story to their own family history or their own experiences and that's for someone who's making a movie telling a movie story that's the best thing you can hear that people relate to it on a really personal level you know that's what i felt so it was well worth doing it it was well worth taking uh, taking on the taking the chance on it and hoping that somebody would connect you know well, let's hear from the audience. Um, if you've got a comment uh, about your response to the film or a question for Vigo or any members of his cast here, we, we have time for maybe just one or two quick questions. And I would uh, ask you to keep your mask on. This is the first time that we're doing a QA and a in, in this environment. So uh, I just think for interest of, of safety, if you can you do have a question or something to say if you just keep your mask on as you as you speak. Anyone? Yes. The question is about the music. Notice that you composed the music for the film as well and, and was that a particular passion of yours? Well, I've been working, and there's a guitar player named Buckethead that <clears throat> that plays on some tracks, and we work together. We work. We've made a lot of records together, and we've we've just played music together a lot. Don't always record it, but we've recorded a lot of things. And um, in fact, we we there's a couple of pieces of ours on a movie by Lisandro Alonso, Hauha, which was also shown at at TIFF some years ago. And uh, you know, I. The reason I wanted to compose the score was because I had a very clear idea of what I wanted, something um, quite discreet, uh, very particular, and I knew it was piano based, which I can, which I could do. And I, frankly, we didn't have much of a budget to go and hire 
company want and that would, you know, some really good composer anyway. And, and, but the main reason was that rather than have someone do it, who was very professional and used to doing it for movies, and then to be saying, no, no, less, less, less all the time, it was easier just to do it. Um, and I enjoyed it, and uh, it was it was part of the process as we were editing the sound mix and the score. It all was of a piece. That effort, it, it it just made sense. It wasn't because I wanted to control everything. It was just because it was uh, I don't know. It was something very personal. I could hear the music before we were shooting some of it, and then even as we were shooting, I was already imagining <clears throat> the select places where we would use it, and. Uh, you know, that that's why I really, but I, I enjoyed that aspect too. Okay, thank you. Um, one last question, yes in the back? Was it guys, difficult to be the director and the main actor in the film? Um, it wasn't my intention to act in the movie uh, originally, you know, because I was concerned that I wouldn't be able to give my full attention to to the crew and the cast, you know, if I was acting in, in several scenes, a lot of scenes. Um, but it became, you know, just for financing the movie, we were getting close to maybe losing that winter and having to wait another year, and I didn't want to. I'd already lost the financing before and had to wait a couple of years, and I, I thought, no, I, I have this great cast, I have everything going, and I, I'm going to. I'm going to do it because it'll help us raise the last bit of money. But in the end, it was a great, it was a pleasure to do it. It was a, and I think it was useful to Lance because we already had a good relationship and Lance in particular, um, it was useful too because he felt safe, I think, with me as an acting partner. He knew I understood what he was going through and what he was trying to do. And, and plus, you know, I had a front row seat, the best seat in the house, best seat in the world to watch that magnificent performance by Lance Henriksen um, take shape. Such remarkable work. We don't get to see him do that kind of performance often enough, but you, you directed him just magnificently. And I have to say that all of you who are on stage, I've already told Cameron how much I like his suit. But Grady, you look spectacular. I mean, it's just... <laughs> Grady's got the best suit. Really, you all, and, and Gabby, your dress is sparkly, and I just love it. It's beautiful. And Bracken, you know, you're just a, a diva. Just gorgeous, gorgeous. And Pierce, what can I say? You're just a, a punk, a brat. <laughs> No, you look you look very handsome and very very tall. Are you a lot taller than when we worked? I think I am. Yes. You are. You are very tall, and uh, it's wonderful to see you guys. This is like the miracle of technology. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, and uh, congratulations again. It's it's a it's a great honor uh, for me. Not only that we showed the movie, but that all four of you guys made the effort to come during the pandemic and whatever you had to go through to, to come to the theater. And same goes for everybody in the audience. I can't see you, but I can feel you. And I thank you all very much for coming to see our movie, which we are very proud of. Thank you. Vigo, thank, thank you, you so Vigo. much. Thanks for, the, for making the film Falling and for being here today as well. And I also want to thank you for being here. And I want to thank your cast on stage with us, Grady McKenzie in the suit. <laughs> I had to put a, a suit on, as you noticed. I, I know. Changed. I did notice you changed. We all appreciate that. <laughs> Expert Tiff. And I, and I had a feeling that Grady was going to be doing something quite special in terms yes. of his uh, get up tonight. So I, yeah. I thought I can't do any less than, than dress <laughs> properly and comb my hair just like Grady has done. That's right. Setting a good example for all of us. Uh, also, Gabby, <laughs> thank you so much, Gabby Vales, and Bracken Burns, and uh, Piers Byfoot as well. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for coming tonight. Thank you, Vigo. Go, Good luck with the rest of the festival, Cameron. Thank you. Appreciate it.